Hey guys, welcome to Rev. Today we have something rather special for you. The all new second generation Toyota Mirai. One of the latest electric cars and one of the very few hydrogen cars. And when it comes to range and fast refueling, nothing can beat it, says Toyota. So let's check it out. So is this the future of electric cars? If you want to, you can let your car pee on the streets. Design-wise, things have drastically changed in the second generation, as you can see for yourself. And definitely for the better, if you ask me, nothing really reminds you of the, well, kind of ugly looking spaceship the Mirai was before. Now we've got this nice looking front, a two split LED headlights, not sure if I like those. Maybe one single unit would have looked better. But in the side profile, you've got this nice looking, almost coupe like roof line. And then at the back here, this LED strip that goes all the way around. I really like the design. Kind of reminds me of, I don't know, maybe Kia Stinger meets Audi A7 Sportsback plus BMW 8 Series Grand Coupe. Looks nice. Despite the new sporty looks, Toyota managed to lower the base price for their almost five meter long hydrogen flagship down to under 64,000 euros. In here you've got pretty much all the space you could ask for. Very roomy and comfy and the leather seats, well, they feel very nice. I like it. You've got a nice big center console where you can put your arm to rest and while in the first generation the interior looked a tad too futuristic if you ask me in here you have got a more classic layout You've got a nice screen behind the steering wheel and a big touch screen plus a separate climate control all you could ask for let's check out the back well at the back you can already see things are not so spacious anymore i mean I'm only 1 meter 70, so I can fit pretty much anywhere. But if you are bigger than your, let's say, average Japanese engineer, then, well, I mean, legroom is fine, but headroom there could be a little bit more. You can feel in here that the engineers, they needed some of the space for all the electronics and the tanks at the back, especially here in this center tunnel. You can see how huge and massive that is. So, although Toyota says that is a five-seater, I don't really see five adults sitting in here. But what's pretty nice is if you look at the armrest, you've got this little control center here. So, when you're sitting here, you can control the temperature, change the tracks, and, well, if you're not too big, have a quite good time back here. Well, let's check out the trunk then. And just as with the back seat, the same can be said here. It's not the most spacious, 450 liters capacity. Could be better, but okay, it is what it is because the engineers also here needed the space for the electronics and the three tanks. So driving the Mirai pretty much feels like driving any other electric car. You get in, turn the car on and off you go. There is no need to adjust to anything because at the end of the day, the Mirai is just another electric car. Only difference being, it doesn't store the electricity it needs in a big battery, but instead it produces the energy it needs while driving in the fuel cell. Now, although the second generation will give you 182 horsepower, the car is by no means a sports car. So. You don't need to expect acceleration times of like a Tesla or a Porsche Taycan. 0 to 100 km per hour takes around 9.2 seconds and the top speed is limited to 175 km per hour. So those numbers are comparable to those of the first generation. But still, this one feels different. You could say it's a little bit more refined, I would say. Whereas in the first generation, you could really hear some pumps and 
compressor is working, this one is really silent. The only thing you sometimes can hear is maybe a little hissing sound coming from the fuel cell in the front, but I mean, as soon as you turn on the radio, you won't even notice that. And if you combine the silence in here together with the little stiffer bodywork and the almost 50-50 weight ratio, well, all that makes up for a pretty chill and relaxing ride. Now Toyota didn't just change the design, they wanted bigger range and more power. And for that they needed more space, so that's why the car, compared to the first generation, is so much bigger. Now the tech back then was just as revolutionary as it is today. You've got your fuel cell, you've got an electric engine, the fuel cell gets fed with hydrogen and air, produces energy, that will make the electric engine spin and off you go. At the end, the only thing that's left as emission is water, which is pretty nice. Now Toyota changed the whole layout of the engine and the tanks. The electric engine now sits at the rear of the car, so we've got rear wheel drive. On top of that, they improved the fuel cell, which now sits at the front of the car. Plus, we've now got three instead of two hydrogen fuel tanks that also sit at the rear of the car. And together they will pack 5.6 kilograms of hydrogen fuel and that is enough to reach ranges of up to 650 kilometers, which is quite a lot. Before we had 500, but I mean compared to battery electric vehicles, there aren't that many that can go that far. Now the real strength about hydrogen cars is, no question, refueling. Because while with battery electric cars you oftentimes have to wait hours or at least 45-30 minutes at the supercharger to keep on going, here you just take the hydrogen pistol, just like in your normal combustion car, put it on, wait for 5 minutes, the whole thing is done, you can go for another 650 kilometers. Pretty nice. Now there is, of course, one problem, and that is the amount of hydrogen fuel stations. Now today, there are more than the 14 hydrogen fuel stations from 2015, right now about 100, but I mean, come on, 100 stations in the whole of, in whole of Germany, compared to the 1,000 or 10,000 petrol stations, that's peanuts. Now the distribution of those 100 hydrogen stations is quite okay, so in Germany you pretty much can go anywhere, but to get to the next station you will have to drive for some time as it won't be right around the corner. The original expansion plan in Germany envisioned 400 hydrogen refueling stations by 2023. However, due to the slow pace of expansion, it's doubtful this target can be reached in the next two years. One reason is certainly the low demand due to few newly registered fuel cell cars. The new Mirai could be the hydrogen car that leads to a breakthrough. So as I said, the nice thing about hydrogen is long ranges, fast refueling and no emissions, well besides water. And normally the Mirai will get rid of it by emitting water vapor. But if you want to, you can quite literally let your car pee on the streets. And that by just pressing this button. Which is obviously quite nice if you want to avoid having bigger puddles in your garage. Another nice detail can be found inside the infotainment screen. As I said, for the fuel cell to work it needs hydrogen and air that is coming from the front of the car. And now because during the process the air will get filtered, it will get out of the exhaust after the process even cleaner than when it entered. Which is crazy when you think about and you can even see that inside the infotainment screen. So basically, while driving the car, you will clean the air around you, which is, well, nice, I guess. <music> so
So to sum it up, is this the future of electric cars? Well, I don't really know, but the Mirai certainly shows that you don't need bigger and bigger batteries to reach higher ranges. And when it comes to fast recharging, or in this case, refueling times, when we are talking about electric cars, nothing really beats hydrogen. Now, would I buy a Mirai? Well, certainly yes, if I often had to drive long distances and don't want to spend my time waiting for the car to recharge. Now, if I only needed the car for short commutes, well, maybe then a smaller car with a smaller battery might be the better choice. Now, why wouldn't I buy a Mirai? Well, probably because I need a lot of space in the trunk and still there aren't that many hydrogen fuel stations in Germany, but hopefully that will change in the future. The ugly duckling has become a beautiful swan and the second generation Mirai has just about everything it takes to help fuel cells make a breakthrough. What's missing are more hydrogen filling stations and hydrogen produced from renewable sources for it to become a true zero emissions vehicle.